Douglas Crosby, and Saul Diamato. And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon, Dan Bergliata. This bout is sponsored by Modelo Especial, brewed with a fighting spirit. P3, the official protein snack of the UFC. Metro by T-Mobile. Catch all the action with Metro's knockout coverage and unlimited data. And now, for those in attendance and UFC fans watching around the world, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the sold out Madison Square Garden in the Big Apple, New York City, New York. It's time Third round in the UFC welterweight division to determine who is the BMF of the Octagon. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a Gracie Jiu-Jitsu fighter holding a professional record. 21 wins, 11 losses. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Stockton, California, presenting the Ultimate Fighter Season 5 winner and the number seven ranked walkaway contender in the world, Nate Diaz! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a boxer, holding a professional record, 34 wins, 13 losses. He stands. Five feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 169 and one half pounds. Fighting out of Miami, Florida, presenting the number three ranked UFC welterweight contender in the world, Jorge K. Brad All right, gentlemen, we've been through the rules of the locker room. I want you to obey my commands at all times. I want you to protect yourselves at all times. This is a five-round fight for determining who is the baddest mother effer here. Touch gloves if you'd like to. Good luck to both of you. <laughs> this is real life. This is, real. this is so ridiculous and so awesome at the same time. And no one can say the F word. <laughs> Except you. Well, I think they do, too. Yeah. And that's how we got started. I have never yeah. heard me say the F word in my life, Joe. <laughs> what are you talking about? Here we go. So Masvidal, this is his new way to start fights. Leaning up against the cage, hands behind his back. Yep. And look for him to open up with something wild. Tonight's fight clock is brought to you by Modelo. Brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Nate Diaz out of Southpaw stands in black. Jorge Masvidal, Orthodox in red. Diaz with a good start. And Diaz immediately with pressure, always. That is his style. Constant pressure, spectacular endurance, excellent boxing. And he will stay on you. Stay on you. And this is where he wants to be, right in this clinch. Once he gets those hands locked, this is just where he's comfortable. It's havoc here. He likes to look for trips. This is where Masvidal gives Nate a chance to kind of just get comfortable. And Nate, Nate fights very well off of his back. Has amazing arm bars and triangles off his back. Masvidal has good shots in the clinch. Nice oh, out lands. Nate's oh. hurt. Nate's hurt. Oh. Cut him with that elbow, bad, and then was able to get him down afterwards, but Nate doesn't go away easy, as we know. And he's not hurt too bad anymore, I don't think. We'll see, though. Oh, oh he's oh, hurt. He got him again. He got oh, him he again. Cover up. Those are heavy punches. Nate's in big trouble here. Masvidal trying to pick his spot, certainly in no rush to welcome Diaz back to his feet. But he is allowing Nate to recover somewhat. You right. see a lot of bleeding out of Nate's face, his right eye, and Nate has a lot of scar tissue. 
He opens up cuts very easily and he's cut badly right now. Two minutes have gone by here, round one. Masvidal biding his time, still not allowing Diaz back to his feet. He's not allowing him back to his feet, but he's allowed him to recover. Don't remember, this is a five-round fight, so I like that he's burning, he's burning the clock right now and making Nate just sit down on the bottom. Nate hit him with a good front kick to the chest. And he's still doing some damage here. Looking for a good position. Still striking from the top. Staying busy, Masvidal. But look how Diaz uses legs to defend, too. I mean, he recovered that whole time because he's got this, this, gr this guard that people don't want to go into. All right, Nathan Diaz back to his feet. Just over two minutes to go in the round. That elbow cut real deep right under the good eye. Good kick to the body there. And Masvidal, Nate got a hold of the leg. Looks like that cut is just above the right eyebrow of Nate Diaz. He was cut fairly early on in the Anthony Pettis fight, was able to fight through that. It seems like there's more than one cut. There might be one on the cheek as well. Yeah, I think you're right. I think he ate a kick and the elbow. Mm. Oh, big elbow there. Masvidal exploding in the clinch there. shots and he always makes it nasty i mean even right here he's punching you in the legs looking for throws looking for hand control here both of these guys are just looking for hand control here trying to get the dominant position but diaz just looking to do damage because masvidal's not even looking for the takedown well that head kick would have felled lesser men diaz covering up amidst the game bread onslaught Diaz with a flurry. Masvidal retreats. Final 10 seconds. Now the crowd get behind Masvidal. Big left from Nate Diaz. Right hook to the body, left straight landed. Very nice for Diaz there. Right. Round one to the 305. And here we see early in the round, knee to the body, boom, huge elbow, double. And that's what cut him, and there's a huge kick, and that kick hurt him bad. Boom, boom, and here's the kick. Right there, bam. I mean, huge, huge shots. Now here's the end of the round. Right to the body. Left to the chin. UFC 244 Masvidal versus Diaz is presented by Modelo, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Cutman did his best to work on that eye above and below of Nate Diaz. This place is absolutely deafening to quote my man Joe Rogan. Here we go, round two. You're going to see Jorge keep stabbing at that cut with his left hook. The you pressure that Nate Diaz puts on you. I mean, always moving forward. And Masvidal's finding homes for those shots. What I'm interested in, in is 
what happens if Diaz is still here and he's still doing this and keeping this pressure on you. I mean, he finds a way. 18th UFC appearance for Masvidal. He's never been finished, never put away in the UFC. Here's a good kick to the body. What I'm surprised is that Masvidal hasn't concentrated on the legs. Because Nate has had problems in the past, particularly the Donald Cerrone fight, where guys have beat up his legs. Oh, good overhand right from Diaz, excuse me. When I was good watching the, the film of, of Jorge, he's best with his outside right kick. And Nate Diaz is a southpaw, so he has to use the kick differently with his left leg, and that's not his main weapon. And he also likes the jab, but he's changed that to a hook. And so Masvidal's making the adjustments, but the southpaw stance does create some different dynamics for Jorge to deal with. Oh, nice. oh. right hand by Masvidal. Jorge can adjust with inside kicks, though. And that's one thing he can do that he hasn't done yet. Oh, huge oh. right for Dan Perfect, Perfect right and hand. Body shot. And body shot hurt. Diaz forced to go down. He literally got hit in the face and said, F you. Unbelievable. <laughs> Kicked to the stomach and laid down and said, come down. <laughs> and this time, Masvidal, I think, wisely allows Diaz back to his feet. We'll see the extent to which he has recovered. The accuracy of Masvidal, very impressive. A lot of people think he's the best pure boxer in the UFC. Tyron Woodley has said that for years. Well, he is a sniper. I mean, the, the way he's landing these shots, finding those openings. Oh, that's the punch he landed on Till. That's one of Jorge's nice, tricky punches. He's